The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. The familiar account of Jesus visiting with Mary and Martha. Luke writes, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord said, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. My dear friends in Christ, as believing children of God, we are so blessed to be able to, to, because we have the word of God, we're able to face life's problems and we're able to help others face their problems as well because we have Jesus, because we have the gospel. We have what Jesus describes here as the one thing needful. But if that were all that this one thing needful does for us, meaning that it just helps us to feel good in this life, to face life's problems and troubles, to help others to face their problems and troubles, then in a sense we'd say it isn't really worth that much. However, the power behind that one thing needful is not just that it makes this life a bit easier, helps us to face life's problems and troubles, but the gospel, the one thing needful, it leads to eternal life. It leads to eternal blessings. Now, Mary, she enjoyed sitting at the Lord's feet, listening to him, hearing his word because, well, not because it just simply gave her a temporary high that made her feel good at the moment like that, but because Jesus' message to her was leading her to her eternal life. And if Jesus and his word didn't point her to eternal life, if Jesus and his word doesn't point us to our eternal life, then really we might just as well have the same philosophy that the rich fool had in Jesus' parable. Jesus had that rich fool saying, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. He was a man who was without hope for the future, if Jesus hadn't paid for our sins, we might just as well be like that rich fool. We wouldn't have any real hope beyond this life either. Thank God that Jesus going to the cross, his death on the cross, it gives us a sure hope for our future. We don't have to wonder if we're going to go to heaven. If Jesus' death was really enough to pay for our sins, because there we have Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man. He's living and dying for us and paying for all of our sins and winning for us salvation. If asked why God should let us to go, go into heaven, you know, the simple answer for us to say is just simply, Jesus. Jesus, because Jesus, the Christ, the God-man, he paid for all of our sins. He won for us salvation. And now because of what Jesus has done, we can join Job in confessing. Remember Job, that Old Testament character who was so richly blessed but then lost all of his blessings because God allowed Satan to take, it, take them away from him and well, even under those circumstances, Job had such a bright future ahead of him. And he said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. 
and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. That's the kind of confidence that you and I can have because of Christ, because of our Savior. And uh, you know, we do tend in this life to, to worry about many things, even though, well, what does Jesus say to us? Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. How blessed we are to know that there is one thing especially that we need not worry about. And that one thing that we need not worry about is that, that heaven is our home because of Jesus. Oh, what's worse than maybe borrowing a friend's book, a friend's mystery book that has the last page missing in it that does, that hides from you the, the secret of the mystery of what ended up happening in that book or, or how about finding an incomplete treasure map that leads you almost to the treasure but doesn't quite get you there. Well, what's worse than that, of course, is a religion that would get us close to heaven or promises us heaven but doesn't get us all the way there or a religion that promises us heaven but was leading us in the wrong direction. What despair we'd experience under those circumstances if we found out that we didn't quite make it or that we were going in the wrong direction, that we were being misled all the while. All the while. Oh, let's thank God that he has blessed our church with that one thing needful with Jesus and his word, the one thing needful that leads us all the way to our eternal life. Because of Christ, we don't have to worry about not quite making it. Since we know that God has blessed us with Jesus and his word, the, the one thing needful, Let's keep on filling up our spiritual gas tanks with that one thing needful, with as much of that one thing needful as we, as we possibly can. And, oh, I referred to this just recently. Sometimes, I suppose, we may drive our cars and maybe we could drive them to the point where we run out of gas and and if we ever do that, usually that's just simply a case of carelessness on our part where we could have stopped at a gas station sooner and played it safe. Our church, what it is, is it's a spiritual gas station for our souls. And let's frequent that station with the church or the, the Bible or devotions, Bible study, so that we're getting a good spiritual education for our souls and constantly refueling our souls with that one thing needful. You know, as we need to keep on regularly going to the refrigerator to refuel our bodies, to give spirit, physical nourishment to our bodies, so also what we need to do is keep on looking to Jesus and to his word for spiritual nourishment just like Mary did in our reading as she sat at the feet of our Savior. And now you, you just look at this story. Martha's stressed and burned out because of everything she had to do. And there's Mary filled up with the one thing needful because that one thing needful gave her the one thing needful. It gave her God's grace and love. It helped her to face life's trials and troubles. It, it helped her to help others with life's trials and troubles. And it led her to eternal life. That one thing needful 
Lord, this treasure, teach us highly to regard. Help us to go after it and to regularly be filled up with your grace and love. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us Jesus, our Savior, and the one thing needful, your word, that helps us face life's problems. Because it gives us the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, may the gospel, the one thing needful, lead us to our eternal life. May the one thing needful keep teaching us to help others so we can experience one of the greatest joys we Christians can have since we've been called to faith by then now sharing with others your grace and love. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always, amen.